Oh, sorry, I just made a video and it didn't record, so I have to do this again. So I'm trying to do it faster and better because obviously it was God that it didn't work the first time. Mm, there is no God, Summer. You gotta rip that band-aid off now. You'll thank me later. Anyways, we've got 10 questions. These are not 10 questions to stomp atheists, but it might happen. Who knows? Unlikely, but let's hear what you got. Well, let's get into it. How do you feel about the way animals are handled in factories? If you're talking about factory farming, I think it's unethical. However, I didn't arrive at that conclusion by reading some ancient literature, but by thinking deeply on the subject and researching what happened to animals before I ate them. It wasn't an easy decision for me because I really enjoyed eating meat. But after looking into it and thinking about eating meat, I couldn't escape the fact that I hadn't heard a convincing argument for eating meat. But I'd heard many arguments against eating meat from an ethical standpoint that I found convincing. In every one of those cases, I resisted not giving up meat. More because I enjoyed eating it than because it was the right ethical decision on my part. I also want to make clear that this is my own point of view, and I don't go around telling people to put down their hamburger. I only really discuss it when asked directly why I don't eat meat. I also don't understand what this question has to do with atheism. Lots of atheists eat meat, and some don't. Whether your god exists or not has nothing to do with what I eat. Do you feel like it's immoral? And I'm not talking about objective morality, because most atheists that I've talked to don't believe in that. But they just believe that society comes together and forms their own morals. So Hitler's society was cool. Um, no. Hitler's society wasn't cool. You're right to say that I personally don't believe in objective morality. I don't think what Hitler did was wrong because some deity said it was wrong, but because I stand against such behavior for a number of reasons. For example, I think human life has value. I believe in freedom. I don't want to live in a society where the state says certain people don't have value and deserve to be tortured and killed. I don't want my friends, family, or loved ones being put in death camps because the state decided they have no worth. I could go on, but I think you get the point. I think when you drill down deep enough, most moral questions boil down to considering the consequences of our actions and trying to achieve an outcome we want to make reality. I know it's a bit more complicated than reading bad literature and following the ethical decisions that our superstitious, primitive ancestors arrived at, but I believe secular ethics are far and away better than religious morality. You should also ask yourself how Hitler got away with what he did, considering most of Europe was populated by Christians. Hitler also appealed to Christianity in his speeches. Or you could ask yourself why the Catholic Church helped thousands of Nazis to escape prosecution. The truth is, the Christian churches did very little to oppose the Nazi regime. Many of them were more focused on their own best interests, rather than the humanitarian crisis staring them in the face. Some Christian churches, including the Catholic Church, helped prepare the way for the mass genocide of the Jews by preaching anti-Semitism for hundreds of years. If you're actually interested in taking an honest look at the relationship between Christianity and its churches and the Nazi regime, I'll leave a few links in the description box. Um, but, not trying to get on you guys, but I have to say certain things. Yeah, not trying to get on us at all. Just trying to insinuate that the atrocities committed during the Second World War were no big deal to us atheists because we don't have an objective foundation to build our code of ethics. No biggie, though. Get the fuck out of here. Number two. How do you feel about eating a chicken sandwich? I don't eat chicken sandwiches. Next question. Is religion wrong? And I don't mean like, are we wrong about religion? Even though you don't mean to ask if you're wrong about religion, let me answer that one as well. Consider it a bonus answer. Yes. Yes, you are wrong. Your religion is wrong. Are we immoral? Are we evil? Is religion, not we, I don't believe in religion. Is religion evil? Is belief in God evil? No, not evil, just wrong. And the consequences of that belief often lead to actions that I would consider unethical, and sometimes even evil, depending on how you define the word evil. Is it even possible to be evil? Does evil even exist? Where does an objective wrong come from? Where does evil come from? Is that really a thing? You need to define what you mean by the word evil. When I think of the word evil, I'm usually referring to an act that is done for no other reason than to inflict pain and suffering. Using that definition, yes, I think evil exists. You don't need objective morality for it to exist either. You, as an atheist, have morals. Sometimes, 
your morals can be better than the so-called Christians. Not so-called Christians. Christians. Some Christians do things I consider unethical. And sometimes they do it because they fervently believe that their God expects it of them. Because they believe what their Bible says, and or their interpretation anyway. Where do you get those morals from? Like I said, this isn't to stump the atheist. I really want to hear some responses on these questions. Short answer is they come from our ability to empathize, our social norms, self-interest, our ability to reason out and imagine possible consequences to our actions. But if you really want to know, I suggest you do some reading on morality. I'm currently reading The Righteous Mind by Jonathan Haidt. I very much recommend it as a starting point. Make no mistake, ethics can be a very complicated subject, but I think it's one well worth exploring. I also think your Bible does an abysmal job at addressing it, and instead of offering real solutions, it offers easy answers that lazy people who don't want to think too hard on the subject will find satisfying. Do you think it's wise for someone to speak about a thing as being ridiculous if we don't know for sure? Just because it sounds crazy. All right, prime example, God, the spaghetti monster, you don't know anything for sure, yet I bet you don't have a hard time saying that leprechauns, elves, dragons, and wizards are ridiculous if someone were to tell you they're real. And yes, your god is ridiculous. Evolution, macroevolution, you tell someone that I came from a monkey, my ancestors are monkeys? I'm gonna say, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Hate to break it to you, but you're a great ape. So am I. And human beings evolved from earlier forms of apes. But is it illogical for me to make that kind of statement because I don't know now I'm sitting here mocking the fact that somebody has a picture of an ape on their fireplace and that was Aunt Sally but I'm mocking that <laughs> no one is putting a picture of an ape on their wall like a family picture and yes evolution is the best scientific explanation for how we came to be the way we are it's backed by mountains of evidence, and it is the very bedrock of modern biology, which plays a key role in medical science, which we heavily rely on to stay healthy. Can science really disprove the supernatural? Can it? Is that possible? Supernatural is anything that's outside of science. So, can we use logical statements? Are we limiting ourselves to just logic and science? Is it possible to break logical rules? Supernatural means outside of scientific understanding. Lots of things were outside of scientific understanding until recently. If that's the same definition you use, I see no reason to believe in supernatural things without evidence they actually exist. If someone asserts something is real, it's up to them to demonstrate that it is real. Otherwise, anyone can assert anything and you'd have us just shrug our shoulders and pretend the claim has merit. Is there a such thing as an evil person? And on what basis? Again, you need to define your terms. Using the definition I gave earlier, I'd say yes, there is such a thing as evil. And I'd base that on our shared understanding of what the term evil means. Where did the concept of God come from? Where did that idea come from? I don't know, but I'd guess our imagination, which was fueled by our need for answers to sate our curiosity. I think God believes we're born of fear, fear of the unknown, fear of death, fear of not knowing how or why we're here, and our sense of hopelessness in times of crisis. When the earth shook, for example, we felt helpless to stop it, and we didn't understand why it shook. So we told ourselves it was the anger of some powerful being, and this being would stop the shaking or prevent it from happening if we just did what it wanted. Keep this being happy, and it would keep us safe. And when the shaking stopped, we thanked this being. When the earth didn't shake for a long time, we told ourselves it was because we were following this god's demands. I think that's part of it anyway, but it doesn't really matter in the long scheme of things because you still haven't demonstrated that your god exists, or explained why I should take your god claims more seriously than the thousands of other god claims that have been made since humanity first came up with the concept. Every lie comes from a certain amount of truth. I don't think you can get a lie without first having the truth. Spider-Man comes from a spider and a man put together. If you don't have a spider, there's no way you can even imagine a spider-man. Okay, and how is God any different than your example? Most gods are very human-like, but just far more powerful. And last question. People have probably heard this before, but I just haven't really got a direct answer for it. What evidence would you need in order to believe in God? What evidence? Because if you see something, you're probably going to say, that's a hallucination. I'm hallucinating. So is it even possible 
for you to believe in God with any evidence that you can even think of? Is that even possible? You really have to understand, are you really limiting yourself? Not sure, but scientific evidence would go a long way towards convincing me. I'd likely be convinced if the dead were raised, or if angels suddenly appeared in the sky and began to cure cancer, or if something equally miraculous in nature were to occur. It would also depend on your definition of God, what powers you say it has, and so forth. If you just meant a creator or an intelligence that created us by some means, that definition would include another intelligent species, and evidence such as, I don't know, something in our DNA that could only have been placed there by higher intelligence, would go a long way towards convincing me this is true. One thing I know for certain though, faith isn't the way to convince me something exists. That's it for this video, thanks for watching, take care and cheers. I don't want this service to end. Yeah, yeah. Hey, say, BP. It's your main homeboys, BP, BP and Massa E. I'm chilling in the front seat. I'm riding shotgun. BP's driving. We're going to church on Saturday night. Ho! Oh, tomorrow is Easter. Oh, look, there's a tree and a fire truck and another car. That car is orange. Nothing rhymes with orange. Let's go to church. It's, it's Easter weekend. Come on, come on. It's Sunday, Sunday. Head to church on Sunday. Everybody.